You know what? Most of the hard work's been done. So today, we get to relax, so a few straight seams, and if you've kept up so far, I am impressed. This, today, is the last of the exterior construction, this video. So thanks for letting me hang out today in your sewing room again. You really do have a beautiful stash of fabric. Let's go make a gusset. The gusset of the bag is the part that goes all the way around the outside edges of the bag. So here I have my lining and my exterior gusset base. We're going to set those aside for the moment. And then here I have my lining and exterior zip gusset pieces, just setting my labels aside. Here are my two lining ones and my two exterior ones with my fleece attached to them. And then I have my number 5 or number 4.5 zipper. You'll see that I haven't put my zipper heads on yet. I do find that it's easier to sew this without my zipper heads on. That's a personal preference. And if you have difficulties getting zipper heads on your zipper by the yard, or if you already have a zipper that has stoppers on it or anything like that, you can have the zipper heads on. This is purely a personal preference. So let's get started. Our first step is to take an exterior zipper gusset. Okay, and so I have my two here. See which way these actually line up together. It doesn't look like it's that way. It doesn't look like it's that way. Just because I have a print. It's the only reason I'm checking this. That way. Which means I'm going to put my zipper in between them. Okay. I'm going to set this one aside. We'll use this one. And what I'm going to do place the zipper right side down along the edge, okay, that edge, centered, and then we're going to baste it in place. You can replace this basting step with double-sided tape. We're going to run that along the edge of our zipper, right on that edge. And you could do this on the edge of the fabric instead if you wanted to doesn't matter which. Just be sure to press it down really well. Okay. I'm going to peel that paper off the tape. And then we'll set that centered, so you should be able to line up your center markings, because you did all those center markings in the preparation step, right there. Now, as I said, the double-sided tape can replace that basting step. Typically, I'll baste instead of double-sided tape, just keeps me at the machine a little longer. However, we can then lay a lining zip gusset right side down on top. Okay? Again, aligning those center marks right there. And we're going to sew this right along that edge with a 3 8 seam allowance. I'm going to toss another piece of double-sided tape right along that edge. Pressing it into place all the way along it. And pull the paper off. Oh, as you can see, my tape started coming off at that end. I didn't have it pressed down really well to the zipper, so I'll press that back down. Okay. Find my 
center mark right there, and my center mark right there. We'll press that into place. Now we're going to sew this right along that edge, 3 8 seam allowance. And we're going to move my needle to the left side of my zipper foot. Okay. I'm going to keep the stitch length as a regular stitch length. And I'm going to pull my thread to the back. I do try to hold my thread whenever possible. Don't want to lose that. And we're going to sew this with our 3 8 seam allowance. Now if you get a slightly smaller than 3 8 seam allowance, then you can always come back and do another seam allowance that's bigger. So if you get a smaller one, no big deal, come back and do it bigger again. All right. So we've got our 3 8 seam allowance. And what we're going to do is we're going to press this back away from the zipper. Okay. Man, that white zipper with that white fabric really doesn't show you much, eh? Now I'm going to flip it over and press this back away from the zipper, which is pressing both fabrics away from the zipper so the fabrics are wrong sides together. Okay. And this is where you're going to see how well you kept your seam allowance, whether it's even all the way down or not. And I think I actually got a slightly light seam allowance, but as in closer to a quarter inch than than a 3 8 but as long as I'm even on my seam allowances on both sides and it looks even on both sides, that's our priority. Alright, we're then going to top stitch along the fabric here at a 1 8 seam allowance with a bigger stitch length. Changing out my zipper foot for my stitch in the ditch foot. Okay. And increasing my stitch length. My stitch my needle is already to the left, not lined up with the metal bar, so it's already set, ready to go. Again, find that thread. Now you can actually continue sewing all the way around the rest of these raw edges, basting the layers together. So I'm just leaving my needle down and turning, so the end. one side of our zipper gusset. So we're going to repeat this with the other side of the zipper. This time I'm going to baste this in place to show you how I do that basting. You can use clips or pins, something to hold that. I'm a little bit of a free-for-all person here. Still my big stitch length we're going to base this about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. Okay. 
So that's basted in place. Then our lining right side down on top and a 3 8 seam allowance here. Back to my zipper foot. And don't forget to change your stitch length back to your standard stitch length for construction. Again, you can use the double-sided tape, you can use pins, you can use clips, whatever works for you. And again, I'm going to start with the lining and press that away from the zipper. I am finger pressing that first, then I bring my iron out and press it away from the zipper. And I flip it over and press the exterior away from the zipper, pressing my fabrics, both of them away from the zipper, so they're wrong sides together again, just like the other side. A good finger press, and then a good press with the iron. And again, we're going to top stitch that edge. So I'm changing my stitch length to my four again. And we're going to be one eighth of an inch from the edge. And I swapped over to my edge stitch foot or my stitch in the ditch. And again, I'm going to leave my needle down and turn it with my big stitch length. I'm going to baste around these outside edges. Whatever you do, if you have not put your zipper heads on yet, do not stitch across the, the ends of the zipper. We're going to need those. Alright, and now because I had cut my, my fabric so that the print continued, you can see how the print continues across that zipper gusset. So you've got the bottom of the T still there and, and the other letters. That's a particular detail that nobody would ever notice except a sewer, honestly. So I'm going to put my zippers on, one coming from each end. If you've already got your zippers on, don't worry about this step. I just didn't put so many zippers together that it becomes second nature to me. two. And we're lined up and ready to go. Okay. So then we 
are going to use our gusset base pieces. So at the very end of step three, I have you check and make sure that this width and that width are about the same. And here if we look, you can see that my zipper gusset is a touch bit wider than my base. That's not enough for me to worry about trimming it down. If however, I got a smaller seam allowance on my zipper, my fabrics would extend past. And I'd want to trim down these sides to be the same width as this. And you do that by trimming a little off of each edge. I also leave my zipper ends long. The reason I do this is because it does give a little bit more uh, strength in, the, in that this will stay in that seam allowance there and then it's going to be in the top stitching and then it's just going to stay in there and it's not going to fray out. I've also melted the ends of my zipper just to ensure that it doesn't fray on me. Okay. So we're going to lay the lining base right side up, place my zipper gusset right side up on top, aligning my ends, and then place the exterior base, again I've got letters so I'm going to make sure they're all going the same direction, oh I just flipped that a lot going the same direction. I'm going to place that right side down on top. And now I'm going to use my clips to hold these layers together. Okay. I'm also now going to sew across this end with a 3 8 seam allowance, full seam allowance on this sucker. And that means swapping over to my regular pressing foot, presser foot. Also want to change my stitch length back to a regular stitch length. And you actually have a little bit of bulk here, so you may have difficulties getting your needle to start or your machine to start walking through this. So if I set this under here, one thing I can do is these presser feet with the little black button on them, the regular one, is actually a presser foot that allows you to level out the presser foot. If I put my foot down right now, you probably can't see this from there, but my foot is coming up at a steep angle. If, however, I press the front down and lift up the back, I can push that little button into play just got to find the wiggle room. And it's lifted up the back side of it so that it's not at a steep angle, it's more straight. This is one way to get through that hump. When I get to the other side, I'm going to show you a second way. So, I'm going to sew this with a 3 8 seam allowance. And just like our gussets, we're going to pull the fabric away from this zipper panel and give it a good press. Keeping my instructions handy, otherwise I'll go out of order on you all. Okay, so press that side it over and we'll press this side. Oh, got a thread in there. Trim her up. Okay, so we're pressing this side too. Okay. 
and then we're going to top stitch along this edge. So I'm actually flipping her out to my stitch in the ditch foot, increase my stitch length, and then again I have that hump to climb up right at the beginning of stitching here. So this time I'm going to use what we call a hump jumper. This one has three pieces of plastic that are held together with what can only be called a rivet. And if I push two of them on top of each other, I get a big hump. If I use one, I get a little hump. And every so often I've actually needed to use all three together at my industrial machine for a giant hump. Here, I'm just going to need one. And similar to using the button on the regular foot, this is just going to keep my presser foot level. So over here, again, my presser foot is sitting at a bit of an angle like this, trying to climb a mountain while it starts. I'm going to slip this underneath my presser foot at the back, and that's going to keep my foot perfectly flat. So again, if I need to use two, then I'll just slip the two under there, but now I can see it's almost angling down coming towards me, so just the one is necessary. Oh, didn't get it long enough. There we go. There we are. top stitched. So now we're going to repeat that for the other end of the base and the other end of the zipper gusset. So we start with the end of the lining base. Okay, So this is the right side of the lining base. It needs to line up with the right side of the zipper gusset right here. So we're going to line those two up nicely. Okay. Throw a clip in there and hold her in place. Then we're going to bring the right side of the base up and over our zipper gusset, smooshing things out of the way and lining up that same edge. Okay. Now the important thing is that nothing's twisted, okay? If you have something twisted, you might end up with a, a really funky gusset. And we don't want funky gussets. We want things that are nice and straight and flat. So we're going to clip all those layers just like last time. And we're going to sew this end with a 3 8 seam allowance again. So, again, press her foot out, go over to my regular one with my button on the back again, and change your stitch length back to a construction stitch. Now, push my button in, get my foot level, and we're going to sew this with my, sewing this with my proper seam allowance. All right, and again, we want to pull these fabrics away from the zipper gusset here, but to do that, the best way to do that, pull it into your full circle zipper gusset. Voila! So now take a second and press those that base away from the zipper gusset. Don't press your hand, that just burns. 
Okay. And same with the outside. You want to press the outer fabric as well. And this time, we're going to finish that basting stitch all the way around the rest of the base as well. So just like we've already basted our sides on the zipper gusset, when I do this top stitching on this end, I'm going to pivot and come down a side to baste my layers closed. So, back to the other presser foot. Stitch in the ditch. Increase the stitch length to your top stitch length. And you might want that hump jumper here. And as I come to that end of the edge, I'm just going to turn it and base down this side, keeping my layers nicely aligned. And you'll see that your center marks on your lining and your exterior should line up as you come across them. So that's one side basted together, now we can baste the other side. And there we have a completed zipper gusset. If you line up your side seams and you take a look up here, your center marks from your zipper gussets should still be your center and the center marks on your base gussets should still be your centers there. So we've got a constructed zipper gusset. So that's it for this video. Nice, short, sweet. Lots of presser feet, lots of stitch length changes. Um, all right, so if you have questions, don't hesitate. Pop them into the, uh, the comment thread there and I'll be around.